Hey Scurry, how you doing? This is my brew pot tonight. Look, you mentioned you didn't know how to use a hydrometer, so I thought I'd come on and give you a bit of a heads up on how to do it. Long story short, hydrometers have a set of numbers on them. I'll bring it in nice and close for you so you can see. They start from uh, 9,080, uh, sorry, 980 and go all the way up to 1,100 a microhydrometer. Another one I had went up to 1,150. This brew that's ticking away nicely in the background, it's a uh, honey, Belgian candy sugar, and um, malt, dark chocolate malt extract. I plan on letting it go through. It's been in for about a week now. I'm planning on going through for about well, it looks, I'd, su I'd suggest about three weeks before I um, go and drop some chocolate essence into it and then um, cold crash it. What you need to do with your hydrometer, okay, this is for everyone, not just Scory, but this is mainly for Scory. Okay, what you need to do with the hydrometer is most brews will start off somewhere in this region here. If you have a look, um, this is 1,040, 1,050, 1,060. That's a common area. I wonder how close I can get. Can you see that all right? It's a common area you, you kick off in when you start your brews. When a brew gets to the end, it's going to float in the water. This is my float tube. Oh, this is my float tube. Doesn't look that great, but it's a float tube. Yeah, it gets the light reflection nicely. By the way, it's nearly 1.30 in the morning, and I couldn't be bothered waiting until tomorrow to do this, so I'm doing it tonight. What happens is you put that in the water, and it floats. I haven't got any water in there. But what happens is when it floats, it floats to whatever the specific gravity is. What I'm going to do is I'm going to pause this. And I'm going to go and pour off. Actually, I'm just going to go and pour off, actually. All you got to do is put it into the fluid. Now, if this is specific gravity of zero or 1,000, that's where water sits at 1,000. So most brews come in, they start off in the 1,040, the 1,060s, and then they calm down. As they calm down, they come back towards zero. Oh, 1,000. You get a really dry, dry wine, dry beer, what have you. You can get below 1,000, and that starts getting to the point where you're drinking it, and you know it's liquid, but it doesn't taste wet. It tastes dry. Strange feeling. I uh, made a ginger beer quite a few years ago now, and it was, well, it was dry. It was so dry, it wasn't funny. Um, I think I got down to 1, uh, 980, I think it was, in the end, and... Well, yeah, it uh, it took three weeks to get there, and uh, that was my second or third batch. And yeah, it was re really bad. But um, your specific gravity makes a huge difference to your overall performance. The lower your specific gravity, the more alcohol content you have. If you start off, say, at 1,060, and you bring your specific gravity up to 1,000, you've got an 8 or 9% alcohol, roughly speaking. Now, I'm not exactly sure on the numbers. I use a website. There's hundreds of them out there. Most um, brew clubs have forum boards and have web tools you can use. And one of the web tools is the specific gravity. You enter in your start one, you enter in your end one, and it tells you what the result is. There's quite a few out there. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to go and fill, this, fill the tube up to ah, three quarters of the way. That's the bottom, that's the top, that's three quarters of the way. I'll fill it up there and then we'll float the float the um, hydrometer in it and we'll see what it is. Oh, be careful with these. They're really lightweight glass. And a few days ago, I was washing my other one and uh, pulled it out of the tube to wash it and it fell through my hands and landed on the sink and trashed my hydrometer. Here we go. Hello, baby. How you doing? Not a hard effort, this. Mm, a little more. Yeah, I know that's a little boring, but look at the colour of that. That is just honey color in that. I don't know if you can see that as well as I can. That's just got honey in it and yeast and Belgian candy sugar. Ooh, this is going to be interesting. I got a lot of bubble. Excuse me while I be a grot. 
Oh. That's really nice. I'm going to drink off the bubbles. Hang on. Oh, hell. That's a religious experience. That is a very religious experience. Now, all you do is just drop it in. Now, I started off at a th uh, 1,110, I think, on this one. Um, if you're using 30 pounds of honey, you'll be over 1,100 easy. Because I've only used 3 kilos of honey, 2 kilos of Belgian candy sugar, and ha uh, 1 kilo of liquid malt. Chocolate, liquid chocolate malt. Oh, look at this. Isn't that beautiful? Anyway, where's it at? Where are you at, girl? Oh, she's got a long way to go. She's at... I don't know if you can see this. Let's bring that up a little. Yep. Yeah, let's bring that down to there. Okay. When you push her in, she stands back up naturally. Give her a little spin. That's how I usually do it. And then it stops, and it's stopping on 1,080. It's got a long way to go. I think I'm going to be here for a month on this one, but that's how you do it. it tells you at 1,080. When it gets down to zero, it's done. If you get down that far, it's done. Um, if, you, if you get down that far and you find it's still bubbling away, what you do is you put it in the fridge. That's called a cold crash. It's not the best idea, but it works. You can't get a bottle, bottle bomb out of a cold crash. It still ages nicely when you bring it out of the fridge, but if it's in a really cold environment, it won't ferment any further. So yeah, that's a good way of getting rid of it. Now I'm going to go and enjoy this. You go and enjoy yourselves and have a great night. Hopefully that answers some questions. Any questions, feel free to check out my stuff. Um, I even showed everyone how to make the Belgian candy sugar. you got to check that out. That was quite a lot of fun.